what is survival to me, above and beyond the dictionary definition of ongoing existence, survival training is about um, psychological mastery, not just psychological coping, but it's about, you know, thriving in duress. So it's almost towards a through revival, can you say? Um, and it is that constantly challenging yourself. I get really annoyed, as you guys know, that I feel the word survival has been hijacked by people saying what we're doing is survival training and what it actually looks like is very comfortable camping. But they want to wear the survival badge. They want to be seen to be in that club of survivalists without actually any of the effort or discomfort that goes with genuine survival training. So survival to me is about being in a highly undesirable situation with very limited equipment or no equipment at all, under pressure, with very serious consequences to your decisions. terms this is pretty much the wildest most extreme environment we've got um, so that's definitely a big pull but also it shouldn't be forgotten that the first time I came out to Sweden I was only 14 years old so I've been coming here uh, the best part of 18 years before I moved here so it's an area that I felt I knew very well and as I wanted to progress on the survival skills and really start to develop and own more of it it was almost like, why would you start all over again in a totally new environment when you already had uh, an extreme environment that was kicking your ass quite comprehensively? You know, why not just kind of build on that? I think for me, it's less survival, more just outdoor lifestyle. That's why I refer to myself now as a professional outdoorsman. Part of my job is being a survival instructor, but the vast majority of my job is just working in the outdoors in various different capacities. Time in nature. Um, for me, it's time in nature. Uh, it's about the, the peace and the reward that brings. In the professional instructor capacity, it's about seeing what time in nature does for other people. So the two are very sort of closely linked. Yes, I teach people skills, I facilitate experiences, I do logistics, but a lot of time I do that purely because it's so rewarding to see what happens to people when you take them out of their normal life for a little while and put them in this pristine natural environment. And it's quite a, an honor and a privilege to share that with people and actually be the person that, that took them to that place. I think the biggest challenge I take on right now, professionally is in getting people convinced it's a good idea to break out of their normal life and re-engage with nature. Because the more technology is heaped on us, the more we just shrink into this smaller and smaller bubble. Where people believe, so long as I've got my tablet and my phone and somewhere to plug it in, that's all I need to exist. You know, communities have just shrunk to individual bubbles. and. To see the distress, genuinely, the distress people have when they don't have a signal on the phone or the battery bar's going down, they don't have somewhere to plug it in. It's like deeply concerning for me. 
especially knowing within 24 hours they're not even going to think about their phone because they're too busy enjoying the nature. Expert for me cannot be a self-claimed title. You can't appoint yourself an expert. Only peers and contemporaries in your field can kind of grant you that status. Um, so I am often referred to as a cold weather expert or Arctic survival expert. Um, I'll accept that when it's ordained on me. I really hate using that word or that phrase myself. Um, but I have some very high level instructors, some very credible people out there in the marketplace who train with me, who work with me, who look at me and say, this guy is clearly at the top of his game. The niche marketplace will deepen and will start to connect. So why have I been looking so much at the urban preparedness side of things? Because the preppers now are really going out on their own branch and their own arm. And there's going to be subdivisions thereof, which is why I'm championing the urban resilient kind. And the resilience guys are the ones that start to put together the martial arts, the self-defense, the urban preparedness, the wilderness survival, the everything, everything. Um, and already you see like-minded people finding each other. And you all suddenly start to realize you're speaking a lot of the same language and dealing with a lot of the same things in the core, but with peripheral skills that are quite specialist. And so you all start to cross train and interbreed with each other. So that's the part I'm really excited about because that's where the true training is. So I think you're gonna have a very commercial market that is just very, yeah, exactly that, commercial, sales driven. It's just about exploiting people and making money. That's already established. Then you're gonna have this quite a deep water where people really dive and explore the meaning of what is this training. And it's gonna be far less people and far less money, but it's gonna be far more credible training. No one has time anymore. Uh, we're, we're in a world that believes we should be able to do everything instantly. So I have students come in, you know, genuinely this has been said to me. I've watched all of these videos on YouTube about fire by friction, so I know how to do it. Okay, good, there's, there's a dead piece of wood, then show me. Of course there's more nuance to it. And even when you've got the nuance, there's patience to it. And so time coupled with patience, people don't have time and the time they have they believe should be used to achieve more than necessarily what they're actually achieving. It's funny because I get very angry and frustrated at myself very often. And I have no grounds to, you know, I, I'm, I'm living the dream. You know, when, when I kind of write my life down, it's perfect. But I guess I'm that person that's always gonna pursue that next thing, that next goal, attain for the higher level. I'm not gonna rule out there's parts of my past that kind of, you know, I replay for various reasons and that that doesn't affect my sort of mood and my outlook in the world. And I think it's also important for people to understand with a lot of the work I do, you're really engaged in looking at the dark side of society a lot. You know, on the violence dynamic, the conflict research side of things, um, that, that does stay with you. And when you go certain places and do certain things with certain people in certain ways for certain reasons, that affects your overall view on life. Um, that's why I like time in nature, because the things that make me unhappy tend to be people or people based. And so in the absence of people, I'm really happy. <laughs> um, but when people are around, which is necessary, things get to suck a little bit but that's why you have to find people fascinating, otherwise it just suck the whole time.